there's a clear theme developing on this channel. I am really bad at super budget PC builds. The moment that I have a strict budget set and then have to go bargain hunt on Craigslist to meet that budget, it just ends with hours upon hours of my suffering. Okay, so things are actually slowly starting to spiral completely out of control here. I don't know why I'm so bad at it, but it's just, it's just something that I can't do. So when Timmy Joe reached out saying that we should do a $250 budget PC gaming challenge, PC challenge, I was a bit worried, but adamant I was going to prove myself wrong and actually do something interesting for once when it comes to the budget PC spectrum. It, it didn't go very well. Um, yeah, so strap in because it's time for David's story time. Uh, but before that, we have a video sponsor for today's video because I ended up buying a lot more than $250 worth of PC hardware. So thank you very much, NZXT, for sponsoring this video. Now, as we all know, Black Friday is right around the corner and NZXT's build is having a sale on their builds. Now, if you're as bad at tech stuff as I am, but you still want a badass gaming system, I think that NZXT build is definitely a good option for you because out of all of the pre-builds that I've tested on this channel, they're definitely one of the better options. And for Black Friday, they're offering 10% off on their pre-build lineup, which sounds like a really good deal because it is. But then you factor into account that they actually have RTX 3000 series graphics cards available for these pre-builds that are on sale. So if you've been waiting for ages to build your new PC just because you can't get your hands on an RTX 3000 series GPU, NZXT build at this point is kind of your best bet and then you're getting 10% off of the entire system, which is, which is really good for brand new hardware. So check out the link in the description below if you're interested in buying one of these PCs. NZXT build, buy it now. Explosions not included. Before we get further into the video, Timmy Joe also did a $250 PC build over on his channel. So once you've watched all of my various failures to an eventual success, go and check out his video as well. Because you guessed it, we're going head to head in the deathmatch arena of death. But better than that, you can also vote on which system you think is the best, and that'll add quite a hefty bit of scoring to the end of the, 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 the final score. So if you want to get involved, watch both videos, and then we can get some voting going. So with that, let's get into my, my just various failures that I've had over the last couple of days. Dov, it's failures. This whole saga starts a month ago when we set the budgets for this PC build challenge. And I immediately hopped onto Vancouver's Craigslist to try and find some deals for a 250 US dollar PC. Now for any of you that have ever tried to buy anything used in the Vancouver area, you'll know that it's a barren desert of deals out there. It is so hard to find good options here, especially in this price point. But eventually I found a listing for a really amazing amazing gigabyte x58 motherboard it's a g1 assassin just look at it it's beautiful that came with an i7 980 which is a six core 12 thread monster of a cpu and an aio cooler all for the cheapish price of 130 canadian dollars and then i spent weeks looking for accompanying components because you can't just use a motherboard, a CPU and an AIO cooler. You, you need some RAM and a graphics card, maybe a case, uh, but I couldn't find any that matched the budget. Eventually I was just like, screw it. I'm not gonna be able to afford to build a system up around this amazing motherboard and CPU combo. So then I had a big change of heart and a really terrible idea. I thought, why not buy an old Mac Pro try and install Windows on it, and then drop an RX 570 in there, because that will be a really good gaming system, right? Although I, I knew in my head, I knew the gaming performance was gonna be terrible. And because most of those old Mac Pros have dual CPU setups, it was gonna be really bad latency for gaming. But at least it would be an interesting build and it would look all sexy clad and in brushed aluminium. And I did, I bought one. This is a 150 Canadian peso Mac Pro. The thing that I realized very quickly about these old Mac Pros is that it's not as easy installing Windows on it as all of the tutorials make it out to be on YouTube. 
Now, the first issue that I had was the fact that it was actually an older Mac Pro than I realized. If I remember correctly, the listing said that it was a 2009 era Mac Pro, but in reality, it was a 2006 Mac Pro, and that distinction for some reason had an effect on how difficult it is to install Windows on it. So then I changed my tactics and tried the older Mac Pro ways of installing Windows on it, and, and nothing would work. Eventually, I found some guy on a forum posting about how to install Windows on these Macs, and they said the easiest way to do it is just install Windows on a drive outside on a different PC, and then plug it into the Mac, and, and it, it'll work. That's, that's all he said. That was all the information I had around that, right? So I tried that. And in the process of installing Windows on a drive using my main PC, the windows on the main drive on that system corrupted for some reason. And then I plugged that drive into another system trying to recover the information off it, which then corrupted the windows on that PC. So I had a chain of events that started with me trying to install Windows on that old Mac Pro, which led to the corruption of two Windowses on two different PCs in my house. So I had to figure out how to fix all of these PCs before I could even get back to trying to get the Mac Pro to run. And at this point, I was completely out of time. I, had, I, I couldn't use the Mac Pro anymore because I couldn't get it running. I'm just too stupid to get these old Macs going. And that brings me to the day before the challenge needs to go live. I've exhausted all of the options with that Mac Pro, at least all of the options that my little brain can handle. And I can't get that other motherboard running with components that I have lying here that'll fit into even a very generously massaged budget around 250 US dollars. Like I, I couldn't do it. So I had only one option left, which was to use what Michael Reeves has termed lies and deceit to finish this challenge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna imagine that the PC that I'm gonna show you now, you've never seen on the channel before, and that it's a highly original idea because it definitely isn't. <laughs> but what I ended up doing was using this Lenovo system that I was magically able to acquire in the middle of last night off of some Craigslist deal. Now this system has an i5-4570 in it with eight gigs of DDR3 in it. Now this in itself isn't a gaming system, so I had to upgrade it by dropping in a GTX 1650. Again, which is a component that you've never seen on this channel before. And this combination is highly unique, and I think it may win this challenge. And all of these components I magically got off of Craigslist last night for 236, what was the exact amount? Give me a jump. $234.12. So there we go. That's how you go about getting a great deal on Craigslist, is you have many failures and then you just lie about it. So let's get into the benchmarks and see how the system performs compared to whatever it is that Timmy Joe cooked up. And at this point, I have no idea what it is that he has, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna lose this challenge. But anyways, this is the system. <laughs> Now those gaming benchmarks are actually pretty good. Every time I use this system, which is from last night, I've never used it before that, but every time I use it, I am really impressed with how well this PC performs. Like it's a really pleasant gaming experience on a 1080p display. Now we also needed to do Fire Strike. I don't ever do Fire Strike, so I have no idea what the scores mean, but I got this score. I, I don't know if it's good, I don't know if it's bad, but there you go. That's, you can compare that to whatever Timmy Joe got on his system. Uh, and then I also needed to do Cinebench. Now, I'm worried about the Cinebench score here because we've got a four core, four thread i5. So the multi-core score is gonna be pretty bad, but the single core score is gonna be pretty good. So here are the results. And again, you can compare all, all of these results to Timmy Joe's offering, and then you need to vote on which system you think is better. Now there was a bonus for uh, RGB, 
uh, I couldn't do that because unfortunately, this Lenovo system doesn't interface with any RGB that I could find for $14. So yeah, I'm gonna have to forfeit the RGB score. But there we go, this is the system that I'm pitting into the deathmatch arena of death against Timmy Joe. So with that, go and watch his video and then vote on which system you think is better and then we'll declare a winner at some point. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this ridiculous video. Um, if you liked it, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next one, bye-bye.